Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, really happy to have you here. Um, so, um, yeah, welcome to this one hour webinar. It will probably take a bit less time, but um, just as an introduction, my name is Jordan. I'm the global president here at Bridges for Enterprise, and I'm joined with uh, I'm joined by Jason, who will introduce himself um, briefly. But we just wanted to give a bit of an agenda for today's session. So maybe we'll move on to the next slide. And we'll start by introducing BFE. And then we'll carry on into an introduction about the incubation program, which is probably the main purpose of why you decided to attend. Then we'll do a little bit of kind of forward looking where we'll talk about some things we have um, uh, currently being planned for the incubation program. And then we'll finish off with some Q&A in case there are any questions um, that you would like to ask us about the program specifically. Um, and just for some context, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, so that's why I'm not going to be um, presenting anymore. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it off to Jason. But yeah, thank you so much again for attending. And if you have any other questions, um, feel free to reach me via email, or I'm happy to chime in. Um, Jason, if you need me to um, during the presentation. Sure, yeah, thanks very much, Jordan. So my name is Jason. I'm um, the Global Operations Head for Bridges for Enterprise. And what this means is that I'm involved primarily with uh, recruiting startups to join our program. Um, and when, when, we, when I talk about BFE, I, there are a few things that are really important to, to highlight. is that we are global. We work globally, as you can see, across these uh, regions here, Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, Middle East, North Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. And our main, the people we work with are social entrepreneurs um, who are in the early stages of their business. So this usually means that businesses have already started operating, um, and BFE, Bridges for Enterprise, is here to help you expand your footprint and enhance existing business strategies um, so that your business can grow. And as your business grows, um, the aim is that the social impact or environmental impact that you bring to your local communities can also grow with it. So um, that's why we focus on these different sectors on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, the four on top are just the most common sectors that we have encountered in the past and we've supported startups, uh, social entrepreneurs uh, who have worked in these areas. Um, but the other areas are also um, uh, industries that we have supported. So even if you find yourself perhaps not in one of those industries here, as long as um, you're a business that uh, has revenue streams, that is interested in social impact, and through the business, you bring positive impact to your communities. We want to support you. Um, and how we do that is through our own global network of uh, startups, but also of chapters, which are based in major global cities, where there are many students who are interested in working with international uh, social entrepreneurs. Um, and as you can see, we currently have five chapters. Um, and when social enterprises join our program, they will be assigned to one of these chapters where there will be students at universities who are willing to give their time and energy and work on the project with you as defined, co-defined with you. Um, and at the same time, there are also mentors that we have um, who mentor both the students in carrying out the engagements, as well as the startups like you. Um, and this, uh, this collaboration between uh, the startup, the students, and the mentors are, oh, are core for um, the program. So how does BFE operate? Um, I mentioned already the three different um, constituencies that make up um, our, that we make up BFE. Um, so the students who engage in the engagements with you, um, the professional mentors who will advise the students and advise the startups on business strategy, as well as the social entrepreneurs. And we hope that through these three pronged, um, by engaging um, 
our constituencies in this three-pronged fashion, we arrive at a more sustainable and inclusive future. Okay, so let me just now describe briefly what the Bridges for Enterprise Incubation Program consists of. Um, I've talked about uh, who we are and what we aim to achieve. And so the Bridges for Enterprise Incubation Program is our flagship program that runs for about six to eight months. It's a multi-stage program, as you can see in this chart, this graph that charts the different stages in the program. Um, we don't take any money for this, uh, nor do we provide any money. Um, so we don't take equity either. Um, and the program is aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and uh, the hope is that by supporting startups who have social impact at the core of their business, we are also helping to reach the Sustainable Development Goals in our own ways. Um, so in brief, the incubation program is, um, starts with the consulting phase. Um, and then it goes on to the finance advisory phase. And I'll explain what these phases are uh, in detail later on. And alongside the consulting and finance advisory phases, there are also two other offers that I'll also go into later. Uh, but the major thing to take away at this point is the timeline. So by applying by the deadline for the, our autumn 2022 cohort, this means that you if you were accepted, would be starting in autumn 2022 for the consulting, um, which will last about three to four months, and then move on to finance advisory, uh, which will also last for three to four months. Um, so this is the rough outline of, the, of our program. And so as for the consulting engagement, we find that this is the most, one of the most useful engagements to have at the start because it allows the startup, the entrepreneur, BFE as well, and the professional mentor to identify the core business areas that, business, that, that the business needs support in. Um, and so we've defined these business areas to revolve around five pillars, um, growth operations, marketing sales, organizational change, and impact sustainability. And these five feature, these five pillars are often intertwined with each other. So the job of the student team who was advising the startup at this point, as well as the mentor, is to really map out what the major issues are, select one key issue, and then work on how to improve that issue and provide actionable feedback that the startup, or the entrepreneur can implement. Um, and we will hear a little bit about this later as well. Um, for the finance advisory engagement which follows, the main goal is to help the startup become investor ready, which means that you have the skills, you have the materials to approach investors in a credible way so that at least it will give you the time um, and the attention that you want to, you want to get from them so, so as to convince them that you know funding you is a good idea. So in that, to that end, uh, in our finance advisory engagements, we support the startup in refining your revenue strategy, which might involve profit and loss um, and other kinds of financial metrics, which are extremely important in approaching investors, um, as well as um, the pitch deck, which is the all important kind of business calling card for the startup, which pre presents a narrative of the startup, what you hope to achieve, what your growth plans are, um, who, who the people are and working with the startup, why they're reliable, why they make a great team, why essentially the investor should put money into, into your business. So that, those are the main goals um, that the Bridges for Enterprise Incubation Program seeks to uh, serve. Um, and we split it according to these two engagements, which follow a certain timeline. Alongside this, uh, we know that there are also other issues that face the startup that are intertwined with the business, but maybe more technical or specific in nature, and that um, you might need very kind of very specialized research to, you know, to crack. So to that end, we have also a legal advisory and technical advisory engagements. And these engagements are opt-in because not all startups find that they need them but it's a good idea to also take note of the offers that we have so that you, know, you can kind of 
craft out the, in, the incubation program that you need for your own startup. So for the legal advisory engagement, because we are also continuing to work with students in this area, um, they provide legal research to help you identify major areas of legal risk that your startup might face in your growth plans or currently as it is. Um, but the important thing to note is that we, we do not provide professional legal advice because our students, although they may be studying law, they are not qualified lawyers. So we don't provide professional legal services either. But what they do is provide um, legal research that helps identify the major issues and um, hopefully will suggest ways forward that you might or might not take up. Um, as for the technical advisory engagement, this, is, this has been lately proven to be quite a popular um, engagement because it targets um, aspects of startups products, which may be very technical or scientific and get students to advise on how to optimize um, designs, uh, how it functions, etc. That's on the one side. On the other side, uh, technical advisory may involve um, things like technical infrastructure of the business. For example, um, internal tech systems that you might be choosing to take up, um, how you might choose to run a website, for example. There are various aspects uh, to technical advisory that, um, that the team can cover. And so that also means that the timeline varies depending on the needs of the startup and also the capacity of the student teams. Uh, the major thing to note in technical advisory is that it's about designing improvements to something. So um, much like the, the rest of your business model, uh, which is we should already be in operation. Um, BFE doesn't uh, start anything from scratch for you. We don't act on your behalf to apply for grants or anything of the sort. We are not essentially your spokespeople, but we are there to support you to achieve your own business gains or your own business goals. And so the important thing is that we want to work with you to serve your needs. Um, but we also need to ensure that after our relationship um, in terms of specific student-based engagements ends, you are also able to continue um, along the path that maybe the students have suggested to you. Okay. So in our spring cohort, the most recent spring cohort we had, these are the number of, uh, these are the stats essentially. We have had almost 200 social enterprises applying from many countries, although most of the countries have come from Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the top five sectors are similar to what I presented earlier in terms of our major sectors of concentration, although these are not, but uh, these are by no means limited. Uh, so there are other, um, other startups who work in other industries, um, but also have social impact at the core of their business operations uh, are also very welcome to apply to us um, for this pro bono or free incubation program. Okay, so one of our major success stories is also a recent, um, uh, recent participant in the program um, based in Kenya. So Toolkit iSkills led by Jane um, exists to support youths, uh, youth and women in the Kenyan economy to upgrade them, to provide them with internationally recognized certification so that they can enter um, burgeoning uh, industries in Kenya and the rest of the African continent, especially in renewable energy. And what we at BFE did with her is that we, we acted as the external voice in terms of providing the external view on how their startup would have been viewed and how to better improve perceptions of their startup. So we listened closely to their business needs um, and we provided, as I mentioned just now, financial projections and also a structured pitch deck that they have been uh, using uh, to, 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 to apply to various grants. Um, so let's now hear a little bit from Jane who spoke to us about what um, the major takeaways she's had from working with BFE. 
But what were the main highlights or the most um, actionable insights that the BFE team or like our team has provided you that you would like to share with everyone in this call? Yeah. So I think for the entrepreneurs who have joined the program this year, uh, what I would like to share is that the BFE team is an exciting, very, very um, talented, very swift, uh, very responsive team in terms of uh, trying to understand a social enterprise and see how to support that social enterprise to scale. So in our case, as the toolkit iSkills, one of the things that they helped us with that was really good was to look at what is the profile. When we've skilled the youth, how do they present themselves to the world? And we had a profile, but BFE looked at it, uh, repackaged it, refined it, and from the aesthetics to the, con uh, to the content, that changed and we now have a new profile that is really useful and I think it will look very good for the youth once they put it even on LinkedIn because then that gives them a profile and an access they didn't have before. The other actionable insight uh, really was guiding us in terms of a pitch deck. So last week on Monday when we had our first day of the, of the year this year, we we were joking that we didn't even understand this pitch deck business when we are asked like what is your pitch deck but uh, bfe uh took one of our pillars which is giving young women access to online jobs to digital skills for online jobs and they prepared for us a pitch deck that went from what is toolkit why do we exist what should the uh, which partners should we approach for that particular pillar so they profiled like six uh companies that international companies we should partner with and they also really even give us the areas of uh, collaboration with those companies so they assessed each and they were able to give very clear and concrete advice on where the synergies are between the toolkit i skills and those organ and those uh, companies uh, they also helped us a lot in terms of how are we perceived. Um, and I think one of the ways they explained us to us, uh, they gave us very good sound advice on how do we package our message? How are we understood? Because we are multifaceted in what we are doing. So the advice I remember was our mandate could either be oversimplified or misunderstood. So they asked us to refine that. So we are working with a communication expert to be able to refine that. So everything we got was practical, uh, pragmatic, and something ready to use. So that's what I would say for us was really, really uh, beneficial with this engagement. But what were the... Yeah, so that was Jay um, from the Toolkit I Skills talking about um, her experience with BFE and the kind of support that she received from the student consulting teams along with the mentor in refining her pitch deck. So looking ahead, um, if you were to apply and get accepted to the Bridges for Enterprise program, you can look forward to a six to eight week multi-stage program um, free of charge um, that is tailored to your specific needs, your specific business needs. And we, in, we will be convening essentially a panel to assess the needs of the startup um, that take into account all the different areas that we've uh, that I've spoken about before, the consulting, finance advisory, legal and technical aspects, um, in order to determine what would work best for you. Um, at the same time, you'll also be uh, plugged into a global network of mentors who are willing to spare the time and their expertise to engage with you on specific aspects of your business, be it related to the specific industry that you're working in or the geographies that you, or the territories that you, you operate in. Um, the third point is also that you'll be able to, um, you'll be getting some sustainability training with Climatter, which is one of our newest partners. And, what that involves uh, is the measurement of data, uh, especially for reporting purposes, uh, and also to refine uh, your own operation so as to make it more uh, sustainable aware, sustainability aware. Um, 
And finally, we also are uh, looking into setting up uh, demo days for investors such that we invite investors to listen to pictures from startups that have gone through our incubation program. And, and so they will get the chance to actually speak to potential investors who are interested in the kinds of uh, social impact and business um, that you are engaged in. Um, so to close, um, we are now accepting applications for the Autumn 22 cohort. Uh, and this is the link that you can use to, to apply. Um, and the deadline for this, uh, it was the 1st of April, but we have now extended it to the 15th to give people more time. Um, so yeah, more guidelines on how the application works can be found on our website, but I can also give you um, a brief overview uh, if you have any questions. So um, Jordan, let me know if you want to add anything and if not, we can open the floor to questions perhaps. Thanks, Jason. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to add, but just to say thanks for the presentation. It was quite clear and succinct. Um, I hope that everyone who's in attendance enjoyed that and they learned a lot about our program and its different components and what the benefits might be. I especially like the case study from Jane. She was a superstar entrepreneur who we had the chance to support. And um, yeah, I think that you know, another aspect that I would love to highlight is just the global uh, nature and the connections that you're able to forge as an entrepreneur, the chance to be involved in a cohort with like-minded entrepreneurs around the world who are trying to tackle a similar problem as you and the chance to connect um, over that shared passion. So um, I think that it's a unique program because it's free and because it's, you know, tailor-made for your specific needs. Um, designed to help your business achieve that next phase of growth. And we hope that we can be a resource for you on your journey. Um, so with that, I think I'll close and see if anyone has any questions.